Hello and welcome. I'm Sharon Porteous and I'm based at the Inner East Primary Care Partnership in Melbourne's Eastern Region. We're funded by the Victorian Government to foster partnerships and collaborations to drive change and improve our local community's health and wellbeing. As the Active Healthy Ageing Advisor, I work closely with seven local councils in our part of Melbourne on healthy ageing. <clears throat> I'm presenting to you today from Wurundjeri land and I would like to pay my respects to elders, past, present and emerging, and acknowledge that this land always was and always will be Wurundjeri land. Today, I'm excited to share a snapshot of my work on a regional collaboration with local government to tackle ageism. The relevance of this work is strikingly clear in 2020, where we've seen alarming ageist policies, practice and behaviours throughout the pandemic. This includes age-based rationing of healthcare and hundreds of infections and premature deaths in Australian residential care. I'll draw on a recent survey that I did of members of the collaboration to illustrate some of the enablers and challenges. To give you some context, here is a map of the Eastern Metropolitan Region in Melbourne, where my work is based. It stretches from the inner urban parts of Melbourne out to the more rural Dandenongs and the Yarra Valley. In the region in 2016, we had a total population of over 1 million people, with nearly 300,000 of these, or 29%, over the age of 55. So what is ageism? Robert Butler defined ageism as the stereotyping and discriminating against individuals or groups on the basis of their age. Australia's Benevolent Society's 2017 research tells us that ageism is increasing in prevalence and has significant negative impacts on older adults' health and wellbeing. Our collaboration to tackle ageism started in 2019 with agreement between the seven local councils in the region to develop and implement a coordinated communications campaign. So why do we want to work with councils? Well, working with local councils on ageism makes sense as they play a vital role in helping to create healthy and connected communities. They have regular contact with and access to their local community. In our region, healthy ageing is a priority where five of our seven councils are already members of the WHO Global Age Friendly Cities Network. And importantly, councils also have a wide variety of printed and electronic communication and the, to, and the ability to reach every household within their boundary. You can see our survey results on the graph showing strong agreement that local government is committed to addressing ageism and is well placed to do so through communications messages. So why did we want to collaborate? Well, tackling ageism is a complex problem and collaborating can help us to understand the issues better and increase our chances of identifying and implementing solutions. Our seven councils overwhelmingly agreed that working together to tackle ageism would be more effective than working separately and would have greater collective impact. There were several enablers of this collaboration that contributed to its success. Their importance was confirmed by our survey, as you can see in this graph. The highest rated element was the role of the Inner East Primary Care Partnership to lead and coordinate this collaboration. One of the key conditions for collective impact is a backbone organisation to do this. Our expertise in primary prevention and healthy ageing contributed to our success as the backbone. In my role, I communicate regularly with the councils, coordinate meetings, follow up actions and allocate resources to progress the work. But more importantly, my role provides leadership for the collaboration, developing and maintaining relationships, negotiating buy-in, guiding decisions and bringing all the elements of the collaboration and the campaign together. Some local groups were also important to our collaboration. In our region, we have a network of local government healthy ageing officers. They support each other, learn from each other and share information and ideas. They're committed to working together, having delivered a successful forum on physical activity for older people in 2019. They're also passionate about the health and wellbeing of older people in their local community. They jointly identified ageism as an important issue they wanted to work on. 
We also have one of the strongest and longest running elder abuse networks in our region, which has begun working on the primary prevention of elder abuse. This has helped shifted thinking upstream to the drivers of elder abuse and possible solutions and captures the interest of local government to become more involved. The next enabler is the National Every Age Counts campaign to end ageism, providing a strategic partner opportunity for our collaboration. Their evidence-based campaign is doing some of our work for us, raising awareness and providing key messages and resources. We can be confident in its quality and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's a win-win situation. And it turns out that timing is everything. Connecting with our Every Age Counts, we learned that they were hosting a tour by Ashton Applewhite, TED talker and passionate ageism campaigner. We hosted a local event featuring Ashton, giving us a unique opportunity to inspire and motivate our councils and others. Her messages resonated and generated emotions that strengthened our resolve to tackle ageism locally. Gaining communications buy-in was another enabler for our collaboration. Working with the local government Healthy Ageing Group provided an excellent connection to the council's communication teams. There's no way that we could deliver a communications campaign without their support. While the Healthy Ageing team started discussions with their comms colleagues about ageism, we also found a sympathetic communications manager to be our champion. They provided expertise and advice on how we should proceed and helped us to connect with other communications managers and their teams. This led to a workshop with representation from both the comms and healthy ageing teams of all seven councils. In this workshop, we developed a shared understanding of what ageism is and scoped what we might do together by learning more about every age counts and the local primary prevention of elder abuse work. Our champion also linked us to the right consultant to develop our campaign. The consultant had local government experience as a communications manager, and this was really important as they had an excellent understanding of how local government communications work. We held a second workshop in January, which resulted in a detailed campaign plan. And this included an agreement to collaborate and coordinate a regional campaign. It aimed to raise awareness and challenge negative stereotypes of ageing and it would leverage from the Every Age Counts campaign. We would have three phases, the first for developing internal council buy-in, the second for internal rollout of the key messages, and the third for external rollout. The campaign would start in March and go through to September, and the call to action would be signing the Every Age Counts pledge. As you can see on the next slide, from our survey, there was a high level of satisfaction with the backbone organisation, the consultant, the opportunities to have input and the final campaign plan. But of course, we've also had some challenges along the way. Councils obviously are different. They have differing priorities and interests and work in different ways with different communities. This can potentially lead to disagreement. The collaboration needs to balance a shared vision and strategies with flexible approaches. We need to acknowledge the differences and find ways to use them to benefit the whole collaboration, complementing each other. <clears throat> There's also the level of commitment. It's been fantastic to see this initial idea to tackle ages and get traction in our local area, but there are still varying levels of buying. Some councils have incorporated addressing ageism into their plans, but others have not as yet. While our campaign is only six months long, for real change, addressing ageism will need to become part of council's ongoing work, requiring support from councillors and senior management. And currently we also have funding uncertainty for my organisation, which leads to uncertainty about the crucial backbone support for the campaign. In addition, we're working on ageism in a bit of an evidence vacuum. So we need to make sure that we evaluate and report on our work to contribute to this evidence base. And finally, our work was totally thrown by a teeny tiny thing called COVID-19. As councils directed resources to other priority communications, we've had to postpone our campaign to 2021. 
Despite this delay, we have made progress this year, and this couldn't have happened without our already established relationships. Drawing from our campaign, we've supported councils and other organisations with communications content for things like World Elder Abuse Day in June, International Youth Day in August, and International Day of Older Persons in October. We'd also developed a resource for councils about COVID-19 and ageism, and we encourage them to reframe their COVID messages and address the underlying ageism we've seen, such as defining all older people as vulnerable, frail and dependent. The pandemic has given us some space to refine our campaign and for councils to advocate internally for ageism to be a priority for them. It's also drawn significant attention to ageism and ageist attitudes in their extreme. So our next steps will be to review and update the plan we have and put a COVID lens on it. We'll reconfirm the commitment from councils and hopefully start the campaign in March 2021. So my take home messages for you. Firstly, a trusted backbone organisation to lead and coordinate any collaboration is important. It provides strategic direction, regular communication and can negotiate around difference. Secondly, I suggest you leverage from existing expertise and partnerships. What's already out there that will help you to make progress? And finally, make the most of the opportunities that arise, whether it be a visit from an international advocate or a global pandemic. What's the opportunity for your work? As we know, older people are us. They're our family members, our caregivers, our workers and our neighbours. Thank you for watching. And please feel free to get in touch via my email if you want to know more.